Shalom Makin. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash, for allowing me to do another lesson. I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the elect. In today's lesson, the Wadi Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, for allowing me to do another one. All right, it's going to go into how their sins shall be their accusers. Salakia, so like, give me one second. And if I didn't um, break it down, which I normally try to do in my lessons now, Yahweh is who the world inwardly calls God, and Yahweh Shai is his son, who the world inwardly calls Jesus Christ, and there's no God beside them. All right, Kai, just want to show my face. Yeah, man. So, hey, according to Second Ezra chapter sixteen, what's that precept at? I think it's thirty-two. No. Sixty-five, sixteen, and sixty-three. Surely he know of your inventions and what you think in your hearts, even them that sin and would hide their sin. Therefore, hath the Lord exactly searched out all your works. And he will put you all to shame. And when your sins are brought forth, ye shall be ashamed before men. And your own sins shall be your accusers in that day. And it doesn't profit to glory in the flesh. Us men of the Lord, you know, that's striving to follow Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, we make mistakes. We weren't born in the truth. And this is how we can boldly say and tell you, tell our people these things. You know? Because the Lord taxes you, you know, so the Lord Salaki, the Lord chastises you on bad decisions. You know. He shows you, like the Lord shows us, people in our family, or we might see a news article that people that make bad decisions. How they are chastised of it. And um, hey, through the spirit, the most high have given us the word, given us the zeal, given us the power to judge our people. And this is how we know that at the end of the day, you're gonna get hurt. Okay. We, you know, as we watch news, we watch alternative news. Well, it's just everyday CNN, you know, they tell you what they want you to know. But the alternative news tells you, all right, the real skinny. All right, like you had this doctor by the name of Dr. Tenpenny. She was going into how those that took Satan's serum, all right, those that are jabbed up, will begin to fill it within three to six months. Other doctors say uh, 18 months. But at the end of the day, you're going to fill... You know what I'm saying? You're going to feel the squeeze. You're going to feel um, you're going to feel duped. All right? As the brother Kalab always brings out in a camp of how you got a lot of people that took the first jab 
and don't want to take the second one because their conscience is now condemning them. They're learning, you know what I'm saying? Or they may know of a loved one that died, you know what I'm saying? Or, it, you know, they may be catching certain types of health ailments, you know? And um, we, like I said, we know of these things. And this is why through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, we know to never trust in man, especially this devil. As the scriptures say, um, damn. Um, Sirach 12 and 10. Never trust thine enemy. For such as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. You know? And, um, that's why it's important to know to, that's why it's important to have the eyes off to see ahead. You know? Like me, myself, I do construction and a lot of times I'll work in older schools or older buildings that may be 80, 90 years old. And you always see it. The rust from the beams or whatever or the rust on the pipes. They, they, they're they fading away. They fade away. And that's just what happens over time. Okay? So your sins is going to be accusers in that day. And your Haobah Hashim, Yahweh is going to give us the spirit to accuse you. All right? Just by our faith alone, these people are accused. You know, these people are hurt. Okay? And um, that's why in the same chapter, it speaks about how there shall be a great insurrection upon them that fear the Lord. Yeah, I'll read down. Um, Behold, God himself is a judge. Fear him, leave off from your sins. Which is sin is a transgression of the law. Why would you transgress the law? Because you think you know better. You think you can do better. All right? You will transgress the ways of your master or your teacher because you think you know better. All right? But a lot of times you learn the hard way that you don't know better. All right? As Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai is our father, you know, and Yahweh Shai is our big bro. And forget your iniquities to meddle no more with them forever. So shall God lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble for behold for behold the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you and they shall take away certain of you and feed you being idle with things offered unto idols because little do our people know or understand like it says in Leviticus 26 the Lord put us here for our punishment um, various chapters Leviticus 26 I mentioned because it speaks about if you don't you know, listen to the Lord's chastisement, which he's been chastising us, slavery, Jim Crow laws, lynchings, you know what I'm saying, a syphilis experiment. He's been chastising us all along. But if you don't receive those chastisements throughout the years, throughout our history, if you haven't received the fear of the Lord, guess what? That hell upon you is going to get greater and greater and greater. Okay? And it says it's going to feed you being idle with things offered unto idols. All right. And we're idle, meaning basically sitting there stagnant, not knowing what's going on. Like I say, like a deer in the headlights and they're going to feed you with things offered unto idols because you don't have a mind of yourself. So this devil has to think for you, i.e. giving you, you know, what I'm saying Satan's serum. And then further on, going to give you the RFID chip, which literally takes him is him taking over your body, him taking over your mind, your brain. All right. As the old saying goes, this devil, that's how this devil treated the slaves. All right. Take the mind, leave the body. And they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and reproach and trodden underfoot. For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. Okay. There's going to be a great insurrection upon us. All right, because, you know, our faith, because of our faith, because we believe in a God other than, um, other than Esau, Edom, we believe in a power other than this devil. Okay. And like I mentioned, which I'm going to bring that out to in Acts 5, the faith of the apostles was so strong that it cut, you know what I'm saying? Two thirds of our people that had faith in, in, in Caesar. Okay. Actually, I'll bring that out now. 
perfect timing. All right? Because this shows you why this should be a great insurrection upon us. All right? Because this world is going to get weaker and weaker. I always bring out the precept and was that Psalms 22. All right? Let me, let me see if I can grab it, actually. This world is going to get weaker and weaker. All right? Going with this devil. I think it might have been Psalms 20. Yeah. Psalms 20 and 8. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. And why? Because the prophecies which we've been speaking of through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, as it is written of in Habakkuk 2, they're now speaking. Though it tarry, wait for it, for when it shall come, it shall not tarry. All right? But the prophecies are spell out death and destruction. So as these people are being destroyed, you know what I'm saying, not knowing that it's all to the glorifying, it's all to the coming of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, because they believe in prosperity at the you know what I'm saying? That the Lord is coming to bring prosperity. We are, you know what I'm saying, are being uplifted in our faith because we finally seen these things come to pass. You know? So this is Acts chapter 5. As, as a, There's actually a preset where it says, Hope deferred maketh the heart sick, but the desire... Let me see if I can find that. You know? Which I'm just going in the spirit, man, because... You know, that's how the Lord got me, man. You know what? That's how the Lord, that's how it should be. You know, just go in the spirit, man. Proverbs is 13. Hope deferred. Yep, the Wadi Yahabashimi, I was shy. Proverbs 13 and 12. Hope deferred, which the word deferred, meaning draw, all right? Led off, drawn down, all right? Again, Habakkuk 2. Though it tarry. So, you know, what, we, what are we hoping for? We hoping for destruction. We hoping for salvation. We hoping for a better life. As the scripture say in Romans 8. All right, the earnest manifestation of the creature rated for the creator. Okay, but when the desire cometh, all right, the longings for one's heart. When the desire cometh, all right, for which I would again, our desire is for the Lord to bring judgment upon his place so that the world can want to once again fear him. It is a tree of life. Okay. Sometimes it's good to read the other uh, virgins. Um, ISV, delayed hope makes the heart ill, but fulfilled longing is a tree of life. Okay. So, just goes to show you that, you know, we... As these things are happening, we're actually becoming alive. You know, brothers are doing more lessons. We're actually coming alive as these people are dying off. You know? This is Acts, Slakia, chapter 5. And I'll keep moving it. Acts chapter 5. Verse 28. Saying that not... See. Acts chapter 5 verse 27 And when they had brought them They set them before the council And the high priest asked them Saying did not we straightly command you That ye should not teach in this name And behold ye have filled Jerusalem With your doctrine And intend to bring this man's blood upon us Then Peter and the other apostles Answered and said we ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, whom ye slew and hung on a tree. You know, and, and this also and this also goes to show you that knowing your history, all right, 
gives you strength. All right, as the scriptures say in um, Joshua, you know, how you should meditate in the, in the ways of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, and that's going to be our strength, roughly paraphrased in Joshua 1 and 8. Him have God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Spirit whom God have given to them that obey him. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. Okay. So again, as our faith and our strength grows bolder in Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, these people are going to grow weaker. All right. And um, that's that's going to be the uh, the contrast, if you will, between us versus them. You know, and that's how we know Yahweh Shai is that much closer because the scriptures say um, the Lord coming to uh, to divide, to bring division. Okay, so yeah, how about you? and this is why you know you got these false pastors showing they showing their true colors, showing their hand. All right, you know. So that was just pretty pretty much it, man. Um, well, I did have another one. This is uh, Psalms thirty seven. Yeah, Psalms thirty seven and one. You know, because this is something I was kind of meditating on too. You know, being pissed off about being in society, but at the same time, you know, yeah, just being pissed off about being in a society. So basically just being in my feelings, really. But, you know, when I read this, thinking about doing this lesson through the spirit, how the Lord just opened this, the understanding of the scripture to me. So it says Psalms 37 and 1, fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they so soon be cut down like the grass and withered as the green herb. Trust in Yahweh. So the ones that didn't trust, well, it just says the evildoers. So they didn't trust in the Lord. They trusted in their own selves. They trusted in Pharaoh. They, they trusted in Egypt. So it says, trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. So these people are desiring long life, not knowing that the only way, um, well, not knowing that the Lord killeth and he maketh alive. A lot of these people don't even know that. You know, not knowing that the Lord um belongeth the issues to death, you know. So, hey man. The moral of the story is to trust in Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai and to have faith in Him. All right? Because everybody who don't, they're going to be sore confounded, literally. You know? A lot of people are dying off that they're not telling you about that's taking a jabby jabbo. And it's going to continue to be that way. They're going to continue to take these, uh, you know what I'm saying, these boosters and these different, you know what I'm saying, um, variants and continue to die off, man. And they're going to blame the unjabbed, all right, really the ones that have faith other than him, all right, for for that, you know, for that reasoning. So that's pretty much it, man. Lord willing, you occupy and edify. Shalom to the elect.